I have a very special guest with me today, uh, a very dear friend. His name is David McBride. He is a uh, former... S uh, so he's basically... He went into the British Army. He finished Sandhurst, which is like our equivalent of West Point in the United States. And uh, uh, so he became an officer. And then in the, in the Australian SAS, uh, which is the, the Special Air Service, so these are special forces, uh, he was a lawyer and he exposed uh, uh, corruption and war crimes and they're trying to put him in jail for that. Uh, David, it's great to have you on. How are you? I'm very happy to be back on, uh, Richard. Uh, you have a particular place in my heart because you were one of the very first interviews um, that I did, long interviews with someone um, overseas. And uh, Thank you. That was uh, We've played that and replayed that. And um, since then, uh, you, you've got bigger and bigger too. So it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's great to be back with you. Thank you. I appreciate that very much, David. And, uh, you know, the the thing is that um, I, I kind of wanted to start with the, this recent uh, uh, ruling uh, in Australia. And I thought I, 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 you know, you're the person to ask, not only because you, you're a whistleblower, you're, you were in the SES, but you, you're also a lawyer, right? So can you just start out very simply by telling us uh, who Ben Robert Smith is? Because I, I think there's a trend to, to market him as the most decorated uh, Australian soldier alive, and he was in Afghanistan, and he received the Victoria Cross. But, but for the people who don't know, can you explain who he is and, and why this recent ruling was so important? Well, I'm interested to, to, to see my friends in the UK. Um, uh, he's had a lot of, it's had a lot of coverage in the UK, which is interesting. Um, not probably not much in America. Uh, he was a, Australia's most famous soldier by far. He was the face of the uh, Afghan war. Uh, and it is a very important uh, case because um, a lot a lot flows from this. He won an important medal in 2006. I'll just give people a painted history. Um, it's sort of uh, below the congressional medal of honor but just the just below and then three years later he won um the equivalent of the congressional medal of honor um he also did a lot of press conferences he's a huge bloke physically very good looking um women just swoon over him he's like six foot he, he, six foot six like an american football player um and uh, very well muscled, tattooed, uh, but very well spoken. And um, he gave a lot of press conferences and he was just generally, uh, he, he was probably the most loved, uh, you know. And he even he was even father of the year and he, and he, would, he would do uh, media oh, right. appearances with... Um, abused women you know and uh and put his arm around them in a very paternal way he, he was he was beyond um most so there was no one there was no one else like him you know if he if he had stood for president he would have been elected put it that way and um uh <laughs> there were always rumors about him um in the military and quite well known, uh, but rumours are just rumours. And um, in 2018, the newspaper, two very big newspapers, equivalent of the Washington Post, I guess, in, in uh, Australia, ran the, these huge stories saying, actually, um, uh, first they used an assumed name. So it got everybody's interest up. They they called him Leonidas. Um, they said that, you know based on the Spartans, and it it seems like they didn't choose that name uh, randomly. It seemed like his whole ethos was like he he kind of thought he was Leonidas, and and uh, mm -hmm. when he kicked someone off a cliff, 
he seemed to think that um he was acting out something some scene from uh, 300 yeah, um, so he, and, he literally um, kicked someone off of a cliff he a uh, navgan uh, man that that's what the judge yeah shows, so and I it think. wasn't even it, 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 one of the, a lot of his defenders say oh well you know he was just taking out taliban and and um um uh mm. you know that's what happens in war but that that wasn't the case this was just a random guy who uh, had gone to the local village to buy flour um, and, and been picked out, and um, and uh, they'd asked, you know, they'd asked him, you know, where are the Taliban? And this guy was like, "No, I don't, I don't know any Taliban." And then they just killed him. And um, so he wasn't. He, there was no suspicion that this bloke was Taliban. Um, so he just they were trying to it looks like most of the things they did um and snippets of for people who are in the military you pick up on snippets uh of the story that other that go over other people's heads um mm -hmm. now one of the things that came out that other SAS soldiers and this was another good thing he was outed not by journalists really when they ran the story but he was outed by other SAS soldiers who were every bit as brave every bit as patriotic or more so really um because he wasn't what he pretended to be and um uh but they'd say they'd gone up the Congo with a reference to the Joseph mm -hmm. Conrad novel or, or um, you know, the Apocalypse Now, a kind of mixture of yeah. both, um, and um, which meant that they, they weren't trying to actually kill Taliban. Um, they were trying to terrorise the population by doing things, by just grabbing a random bloke, throwing him off the cliff. When this guy got thrown off the cliff, it was in full view of people, and they mm -hmm. shot him when he got down the bottom. And when they – he didn't shoot – Ben Robert God. Smith, according to the allegations, which has been proved, he didn't shoot the guy himself. He, he got his that. Afghan, um, got other people to do it, and that wasn't an accident. That meant that they couldn't squeal on you. Uh, they were now involved. I mean, you told them to do it, but once they did it, they thought, could hardly go and give I evidence he was against you. ordering other SAS to do it at first, and then uh, – uh, I I kept you know I kept uh, digging into this and as you as you hinted he he told the interpreter to tell an Afghan to shoot this Afghan man yeah All right something okay in that case he got an, uh, an Afghan to do it but there was another case where he got a rookie to do it yeah um, it's blood but I mean you know he, he's complicit himself I mean he's saying you need to shoot this guy there's a lot of sort of Hollywood references because it reminds me of that um. A movie which I really like, the Brad Pitt movie Fury, where yeah, they do that good. when they've got a young, um, a young, uh, right, uh, a guy. And there's in that movie you can see that there is some sort of justification when you've got a young rookie who is, um, uh, he's not prepared to uh, to fire on um children. The thing um, is, in, the but thing is, in this case, it yeah. wasn't justified. You know, it, it, right. there it was wasn't um, justified. Yeah, because no, I, I, I just no, wanted uh, to kind of point out. Sorry, sorry to, to um, cut into you there, David, but uh, there are there were basically six murders uh, um, in that were discussed in this case, right? Like, so he was suing the papers for accusing him of having murdered people, and then I think out of the six, the judge said uh, or ruled three of them to be true based on you know. Uh, um, what was it? The uh, uh, hanging on the probabilities of of you know what what testimony and facts uh, the judge had seen, right? So three, at least three of them, we know are, are yeah, likely yeah. true. Yeah, and the judge was very fair. The judge was very, very good judge. We were lucky in this case. Justice was lucky. We had a very good judge who who was he took a long time to write um, his judgment. It was like six hundred pages long. I think that's the. Um, uh, one of wow. them, and, and and there's a classified, and that's a big judge. But there were sixty witnesses or something, and he really was very judge-like in the sense that um, he uh, he yeah in the in the cases, even though he knew it was a very serious allegation to make, he said, um, "I'm satisfied in in these three cases that it's 
well, God, he, it's he didn't say beyond reasonable doubt, but he said it's clear that this is what happened. And also, there were other things because he said, um, in judge language, he said, um, Robert Smith was uh, an unreliable witness, which means he's a lot. You know? and 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 there were lots of luckily there were lots of different incidents and it didn't just have to come down to that like they he buried some uh, usb sticks right. in his back garden and his own wife it seems gave evidence against him to say yeah no he buried the, and she had very detailed she you know they're in a pink this whole thing is, is a labyrinth a it... container or something yeah it had a ring of truth about it um and then he counterclaimed against her and and he yeah. told her he was going to take the children off her. He had a mistress. Um, now, it wasn't, the judge was good. The judge said, I'm not satisfied. The mistress's story wasn't particularly clear. And the judge was good enough to say, I can't, I can't find with any certainty that he hit the mistress. Um, right, because that was also but, involved. Yeah, the fact that he uh, even had a mistress and he told his wife, yeah. you need to lie and pretend we were broken up. Um, uh, and she was going to for a while. And then she got, because then I, I think she just began to see, um, as you would, you, your wife, you're married to someone, you, you you always give them the benefit of the doubt, but she just began to see that he was full of shit and had been for a while. Uh, and he even th and he threatened her, he's going to take the children away. And I think that, one of the um while the judge only made the three sort of those serious findings one of the things that really sunk him in the eyes of australia was all the little shitty things that he did you know <laughs> he had um he burnt his computer with petrol so that police couldn't get it and then when he asked about it he said with a straight face uh yeah doesn't everybody you know burn their computer with petrol <laughs> and um <laughs> And the whole mistress thing, the mistress had an abortion and, and it looked and he sent a private investigator to uh uh you know to make sure she really was having an abortion or and he sent letters to other SAS people I, saying, you know, if you uh if you give evidence, um I'm gonna burn your house down and um, God. I feel like he spent just, more effort trying to like hide the affair than the killings. Yeah, he's just, yeah, exactly. I think a lot of people lost faith in him. Yeah, more more because of the affairs um, than actually. There's still a lot of people uh, in Australia. They don't necessarily come out and say it. Usually, they're on Twitter uh, with assumed names or fake names, and they still love him. And they're like, "Oh well, war is war." All these backyard backyard warriors saying, "Oh, war is war," and you know how hard it is. <laughs> but the problem is with him. He didn't run that defense. If he'd come out and done the old Colonel Jessup, you can't handle the truth. Yes, I killed people, but I killed people to save Australian lives or something. He might, he would have had a chance, but he didn't say that. He, he said, didn't even I've bother doing that, huh? anything wrong. He actually, the, wow. the lawyers were good. They trapped him at the beginning, possibly because he was such a pathological liar. They said, do you understand what the rule, and he had a lot of get outs. He could have said the rules of engagement were bullshit. They didn't apply. Um, he, he, but he didn't. He said, I un absolutely understood the rules of engagement. I would never, ever commit a crime. You know, they they do what they call shut the gates. They got him to say he was an angel. And and also, he was a bit of a dog about it. Um, he probably burned my house down for saying that. But <laughs> God but forbid. I know coming from other SAS people, he, he, he didn't just say they were mistaken. He said the people that gave evidence against him are liars and dogs and cowards. And these are people that have spent 20, just like him. Yeah, weren't they also, weren't most of the people giving testimony SAS, uh, whether for Absolutely. or against? The people that wasn't, it was painted, and he still got people painting. It was painted as him versus the journalist, but it wasn't. It was, it was other, mm. just, well, obviously braver, stronger SAS people um, who were not, um, a bit like me, they, they'd seen blood that, you know, people say that about me, they try to imply that, you know, I've seen, I've been around the world and I've seen some stuff and um, it, that doesn't, you don't, you know, you could still speak up even though you see. Yeah, shit. exactly. There's, there's a line and he had crossed that line. He didn't even, you know, he, he ran across that line. There was no, these were not cases of, oh, could have gone one way or the other. I was a bit, I was a bit tired and, um, I mean, a bit uh, shaken up. This was this was something like, 
we are going to kill this bloke. We are going to rip yeah. his head off, and then we're going to say he 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 was an insurgent. And no yeah, one is. It, and it's if you really try to tell the truth about it. I'm going to kill you. Um, and there were things which have a ring of truth about it, where he said things like to other SAS people. I just want to get someone in a room and I want to blow him away and I want to look at the face. You know, I want to watch his face as he dies. Yeah, I think know? he said that it's uh, the most beautiful thing he's ever seen or yeah, something yeah. like this. God, yeah, I shooting mean... a teenager in the face, you know. Um, and another time Christ. I want to strangle someone and, and I want to watch the life force go out of him just to see what it's like. And they, they all had the ring of truth about it. Uh, they weren't all proved but they certainly weren't disproved and um but the fact that he wouldn't admit he'd done anything wrong ever and the fact that he he was trying to burn other people's houses down um and he even got he almost got one sas bloke killed because he called um oh really the cops yeah he called the cops and said oh this guy's got a gun and he's dangerous and he's at home and the SWAT, like SWAT team, team. Came to his house. Yeah. And it could have been death by God. cop for this guy. If he'd come out swinging or or not, um, not been compliant, the cops could have shot him. And that was exactly um, Robert Smith's plan. And that's that's pretty bloody sinister. Does that that's um, one of his own people doing that? Yeah, doing that to one of his oh, own yeah, exactly. people, Someone right? Who, I mean, you know, for for all this sake, like, oh, I'm a I'm a proud soldier who Right, uh, that's what that's what I know, wanted to put say. My yeah. First, the proud soldiers don't do that. They don't they don't go and kill their their bloody uh workmates just cuz their workmates uh I mean don't say what they want. The the say. three that were proven just so we can keep count the three that were proven. I think uh I mean you meant you mentioned I I think it's so brutal. Right? I I have trouble kind of just explaining it to people. One of them you mentioned is basically he he kicked someone off of a cliff, a man, and then when he found when he saw the man wasn't dead, he uh, he got the uh, interpreter to tell an Afghan to shoot him. So that's not, uh, one of them, one of the murders. Then the other one is he um, he killed someone with a prosthetic leg. And now I think we come to the most disgusting one of all, if you could even, you know, quantify them. They, he took the guy's leg and then they used it as a drinking vessel in a bar. I mean, when I read this and the pictures, I saw the pictures, I just, I'm, what do I say? Help me, David. <laughs> oh, what do well, I say? You know, funny enough, being a, it's so being evil. A, being a soldier, um, that didn't bother me too much. Although I, it, when I was in Afghanistan in 2000, um, I met the, some Taliban. They were our guides uh, around there, and uh, there was one in particular that I didn't, I, I, I didn't mind. He was, I could see he was a soldier. If you're a soldier, and this is before nine eleven, of course, and, and if you're a soldier, you can, you know, you can get on with other soldiers, whatever, whatever they represent. Uh, and he, he had a prosthetic leg, and I've often wondered whether, <laughs> whether oh. he was the guy uh, ten years later that they'd shot. Um, and drank yeah. out of it. I don't. I don't think that I mean, the the dead guy. If he if he could speak, um, the dead guy. I don't think he'd particularly care whether they were using his uh, um, as leg as a, a, a prosthetic. Uh, I think they probably. Um, he probably would be uh, uh, more uh, pissed off that uh, he was murdered. I suppose. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> they'd be, he'd be. He'd be not. And well, not. They'd be. <sighs> the Taliban were angels, but they would be annoyed that the Australians lied about it and got medals for uh, for being brave when actually all they'd done is just blown someone away who was standing there with handcuffs on. Um, yeah, this... I think uh... that they would just think, you know, own... they would, And they'd be right. They'd say, own your own actions. And um, honesty is important for them. And they'd be saying, well, fucking, you know, you're just full of shit when you and you went home and told your wives and your and your fellows how brave you were and you went to the left and went to the right and then you got up and used your superior skills to 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 outshoot the Taliban when actually you took this guy out with handcuffs on, stuck him in a field and blew him away. Yeah, it's and an then execution. You talked about it like it was bravery. Um, I, I imagine that Taliban's ghost would be going, yeah, you were pretty fucking brave when you <laughs> shot me lying on the ground with handcuffs. Um, I think he'd be allowed to at, at least, I like to think maybe he made their, uh, anyone that drank out of it gave them a you know, bad stomach. 
I'm just I'm just gonna put this up quickly. Uh, but yeah, basically this was in a, a with Americans as well. So you had Americans and Australians in this bar. Is is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, again, I some of the you've got. It's hard for me because I'm a, <clears throat> when I'm in the middle. I I don't you you end up making you probably have this problem with you too. You sometimes you, you, unless you you're extreme on one side or extreme on the other side um you, you know you're going to get people from both sides hating you i don't think that drinking was uh, too much of a problem um what was it what was annoying about that was that robert smith again uh just denied it and said i would oh I, in fact i think he even said yeah that was a that would be a disgusting thing to do to drink out of you're right, um, he said that. Yeah, and, and then the uh, pictures that were just in... <laughs> hypocritical. I mean, because he obviously didn't think that. So why didn't he just say, "Well, you know, war's tough, and and this is yeah. what happened." But he was like, "Oh, I think he was like, oh no, that would be terribly disrespectful. I would never do that." And it's right, like, and this is this is after so the pictures have come out. Yeah, he's he's like, yeah, yeah. Well, I so thought it was Viol at the time. <laughs> Yeah, and it was like, uh, you know, he, he couldn't, what do they say? He, he couldn't tell the truth when the truth would do. And mm. that's not the sort of person you want um, uh, looking after Australians. Cause, and a lot of Australians were like, um, oh, you know, he's just, a, you know, people, especially the right-wingers, they, um, they can't shake it that he's not a good person. But you'd say, if he's that untrustworthy, there's no reason why he wouldn't come back to Australia and rape your daughter and, and kill her. And um, and then you'd be upset. Then you wouldn't be saying, oh, we could never put our soldiers on trial. Um, then you'd be bleating. Then you'd be bleating yeah. for the nearest investigative journalist yeah. um, to actually do something for you. Yeah. Uh, don't think that just be, if this people murder behavior. Uh, in Afghanistan that they're not going to murder in Australia. Um, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and, all, yeah, all these people that say, oh, we shouldn't put soldiers on trial, they'd be very happy to put soldiers on trial if their own interests were threatened by soldiers. Right. You know, it, 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 they just, it, it's a lot of, well, this would appeal, there's a lot of racism. They think, oh, brown people don't matter. They only shot a brown person. Um, do you think, you do know, you think that's a big factor with Ben Robert Smith or, or in, in general? I think it is, you know, they, they, they people, it's the same with China now. Um, there's a certain amount of uh, inability for people to think that somehow um, Afghans didn't deserve it. And somehow, if, if a, even if a woman uh, had her head blown off um, for no particular reason in her own house, somehow something about her deserved it um, because... Uh, because the Taliban, you know, were her fault or something like that. Um, there's no sympathy at all for many thousands of, of people that had bombs dropped on their house. Like there was a real, we had this kind of childish view. Oh, we were there in Afghanistan to help the women and children. <laughs> yeah. Um, we killed thousands of thousands of women. Um, you can't go to school if you're dead. And, um, and yet no one kind of thought of that. What about all the bombs we yeah. dropped in order to create con safe conditions for Afghan women? We killed, we killed a lot more Afghan women than we ever allowed to go to school. Um, but, uh, and we weren't there to make them go to school. We were there for our own geopolitical interests. And, um, yeah. but people, race, there's a certain, I do, do believe it's a racism. Yeah. If someone, an Australian woman, uh, got killed by the police um they'd, they'd be, be more an, outraged an outcry but there seems to be an afghan woman getting killed people are like oh yeah oh well soldiers are soldiers you know um and that's that's clearly wrong we have it in relation to china now too you know people people uh, it, you see it's probably clear in russia it's kind of funny we used to have to hate the Russians because they were communists. Right. The communists wanted to, you know, they were godless people <laughs> who wanted to take our um, take our lifestyle away, you know. And now the Russians are not communists, but strangely, we still have to hate them. Yeah. And um, for some it's reason, weird. I mean, <laughs> we, 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 why do we hate them now that you know they're not communists? And it just it's actually exactly. some sort of racism that they, no matter what they do. Um, apart from be, you know, a part of the United States, we have to hate them.
Yeah, um, I, the same with China. I agree People with you. This logic is believe, present. Yeah, like we, I'm seeing more and more, which is good. But you know, stories from people saying China's not the way it's portrayed um, in the West. And um, a few good guys on uh, Twitter, French bloke, and um, um, yeah, yeah, people. Some people just refuse to believe it. You know, they just cannot believe that. Some people in China are happy with the regime that's uh, that that they have eradicated poverty. They have done a lot of things in what even what they're doing with the Uyghurs is certainly better than what we did with the Afghans. Yeah, like we suddenly you care know, about Muslims now. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. We didn't just. And it's amazing the hypocrisy we wow. have saying, "Oh my God, they treat Muslims so badly when they when, when we can't see what we did in Iraq and <laughs> Afghanistan and." Yep. Syria and Guantanamo Libya, Bay, and yet we want to sort of point the finger at them and just say, "Well, it's, that's rich." It, and a lot of it is just <laughs> racism, you know. We yeah, our Chinese, and we had it here. You can see the old newspapers in Australia, because the Chinese or some Chinese nationals were in Australia quite early. Mm -hmm. They came with the convicts, and they were certainly big in the gold rush, and they were hated then, you know. You could you could kill a, a Chinese national in Australia two or three hundred years ago, and probably get away with it by yep. saying it was their fault. You know, a lot of them got robbed and murdered, and uh, there's some terrible stuff. We had some. Funnily enough, there's a uh, a Muslim friend of mine who's a bit of a uh, historian, and she's um she's researched. Uh, uh, there were Afghans in Australia, uh, cameleers. They brought them out to to build the um. Um, the railway, the very long railway between North and South Australia, or oh, no, I think to put the telegraph in, some sort of these ah, engineering okay. feats. And because they had skill in the desert, they came out with the camels and and they um, helped put the um, the radio uh, uh, telegraph in, um, uh, which is through very inhospitable country. And um, right, and there was a few of them, <clears throat> and they. Um, one one of them married a, a white woman who uh who had been abused by her husband or whatever and they they experienced terrible racism and the, and violence against them even though they were these sort of peaceful guys who 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 did a very good job running camels um you know they built a mosque um and that was uh, considered quite outrageous and um they weren't allowed to live with the uh, the whites, you know. It, it it makes you cringe, but that it, that's it not does. even that long ago, you know. The yeah, way, um, it, it's it's quite endemic with us. And, I w uh, I wish I remembered this story, but I think there was a fame uh, a really good cricketer, and uh, when the team went for for a pint, he had to sit outside. Uh, yeah, which, that that when I was growing that's up and I and I heard this story, I was I I was. Like you said, just there's it's a lot so of cringy. terrible history like that in Australia. The first Australian cricket team were were indigenous, um, and they and they were really good. And they um they went to England, but I think then they were banned or something. They they weren't allowed to play. And the indigenous um uh, diggers who went to uh, join the military and went to the first and second world war mm -hmm. when they came back they weren't allowed to go to the iris which which is just when you imagine the anger you must have felt when yeah you yeah you got people in africa country. who fought for france yeah. same treatment yeah. after the war you yeah. Know. yeah um you can imagine you 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 you, under, you could see what that would make you mm -hmm. a terrorist you would say <laughs> how dare you um you, you you know after i've fought for you you sort of treat me like um a dog um, it's horrible. That, really. uh, it, it is Even Alan outrageous. Turing, you know, he chemically castrated him after he cracked yeah, the enigma yeah, with yeah. the Polish. I mean, yeah, that would send yeah. you mad. I mean, it would send it would send you absolutely mad. You know. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, he, Turing. That's a heartbreaking case for to think that they hounded him. Um, and they Christ, I couldn't believe this. Of respect, even though he he was, if you had to put. Winning the war on on a particular person, it would it would it would be on him because that yep. that code breaking was absolutely. I, I'm essential. speaking to you on the computer. To, um, I mean, not not this specific one, but you know, he's he's uh, he's also credited as the the uh, father of the modern computer. So you know, you and I were able to converse thanks to 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 his work, and uh, of course, winning World War Two 
like you said, if you had to put, you know, uh, and yet give the, that the victory. police hounded him because he was gay, yeah, and they yeah. just could not accept that. You, you know, all your, <laughs> all his good work that he'd done meant nothing. You know, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's kind of outrageous, and it says a lot about the West that we we haven't come to grips with our hypocrisy. Um, yeah, un unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, and I, I, I have to say, unfortunately, I, I agree with you, uh, uh, David, because I think towards Russia, towards China, there's some kind of racism, uh, you know, that's that's deep seated in Europe, in the West. It, it's, uh, I, I, I think most people they don't realize they don't realize that they've been conditioned and duped into just hating the Russians. You know, it doesn't matter well, the whether they're communist or not. Yeah, I know. absolutely. And that's why that Russia yeah. gate was so important because. Um, Trump, uh, uh, the, the 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 possibility of um, uh, sort of relatively peaceful relations with Russia was just something that they could not um, deal with. Uh, I noticed this when I was in Afghanistan in the sense that the problem with uh, fighting the Muslims, and it really was a war on Muslims, you couldn't sell enough expensive equipment. I mean, they... We, it was ridiculous. We phased out perfectly good aircraft for our purposes in Afghanistan, um, the Warthog. And right, I was about to say loved. A-10, yeah. Yeah, the a everybody loved the A-10, you know, the Special Forces, and because it, it was it was slow and it was it, it hit the target and you knew you were going to be all right if they if the A-10 um, arrived on, on the scene. Um, we got rid of them and replaced them with, a, with the F-35 or whatever, which wasn't nearly as good. Uh and yeah, they was, do different when, jobs, don't they? Yeah, which, you know, imagine if you're going at Mach 2 or whatever, you, it's pretty hard to hit the target, <laughs> um, especially in a place like Afghanistan where you where there's civilians and, and you need to you, mm -hmm. you need to sort of accurate fire. And it was 10 times more expensive or probably 100 times more expensive. And um, yet, mm. and I could sense that this view, the, the, the big munitions manufacturers didn't, it's probably the main reason why we withdrew from Afghanistan. It it was expensive, but it wasn't expensive enough, you know, for <laughs> Boeing and whatever. And um, I see they, they really wanted war with a technological power like Russia or China mm. because that meant you could sell more equipment. You know, you could yeah. sell battleships, you could sell you know aircraft carrier and 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 all sorts of stuff, which really cost big money. And um, that's a very uh, good point. Yeah, that's know, a very and, good point. Um, and that's why I think the real reason we pivoted to uh, Russia, um, and and I could see it even before we left Afghanistan. There was a story in the New York Times, and it was like a bit like this sort of blowing up of the pipeline. It was obviously false. And one of the advantages mm. I've got is that working as a military lawyer, you, one of the jobs you've got to do is to sign off on false information, where we put out in order to confuse the enemy or whatever. Mm -hmm. I have to say we're in one town when we're actually in another town or whatever. Um, and, um, but when they, there was a story saying, oh, Russians are paying a bounty to Afghans to oh, kill God. American soldiers. Now, that was clearly a false funny. story. You know, you don't need to pay Afghans <laughs> money to kill Americans in, in their country. Um, but it was made to beat up the pivot hatred from Afghans to Russians. I see. Um, and it ran and ran. And of course, the only source was uh, intelligence sources, which is, <laughs> who, who are paid to lie. So why would they tell the journalists of the New York Times the truth? And, um, but yeah, yeah, I could see that that was that pivot. And there's been, this is why they've been so successful with our, um, Putin and Ukraine is that they spent 20 years uh, putting out propaganda against Putin. And now, uh, it's got to such a state now they could unilaterally bomb Moscow with nuclear bombs, I think, and and probably sixty percent of the West would say, "Good on you, that's yeah, fantastic." Probably Putin is a monster, and they've it's because they've spent twenty years doing anti-Putin stories. I mean, and no one they've already drone no striked it. Them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they, and and then they and then they can oh. even get away with it. They can say. Oh, the Russians did that themselves. <laughs> that was some sort of false. That was the Russian, you know, Putin haters that did it. You know. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, <laughs> and they can get away with that kind of rubbish. And and even if even if someone like um, 
Seymour Hirsch exposes them, he gets rubbished and, you know, vilified. And so we have this terrible perfect storm now where it's anyone that that talks the truth, uh, which goes against uh, the US narrative, is just destroyed. And and you can say something totally ridiculous and get away with it. Yeah. Um, And the only source you need is... um, um these uh security systems. T- we've learned a lot of really bad lessons from the vietnam war i used to think we have evolution positive evolution but um it seems to be negative evolution in that they've learned that the reason that they lost the vietnam war was because the, uh, people saw the truth from journalists in the field so right now they make sure there's only embedded journalists who are with the military and they thankful for the military for getting them this meal ticket and they they kind of got a little bit of homoerotic love for the soldiers and <laughs> and 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 they um and they write these beautiful about how good I mean like no one yeah. the biggest kept secret everybody who was there knew the Afghan war wasn't going well but you never saw it in any major paper. You never saw the sort of mm. stuff about it. And that's outrageous. 20 years. You yeah. never really saw any big expose to say, even with the even just the money that was being wasted and in going into contractors' pockets and then back to US companies, you never even saw a story about that. Yeah. Um, now that's an incredible cover up. 20 years is a long time to keep that lid well, on that secret. You, you do a disservice to yourself and uh, Assange because you guys, you two, you, you are the ones yeah, there's who a few did of the us voices and, and, yeah. and also a disservice to yourself because without people like you, would be, we'd be dead. And this is you know, why independent media like that, you, thank you David. Sa- literally save the world literally save the world well let's do it together because uh yeah, you know, i don't yeah, i, I don't so. uh i i uh, don't even know what to say that like like now when they're hitting moscow with drones and it's just like okay whatever it's normal i mean in the cold war this this was unthinkable you know that you would yeah exactly. have a hot war exactly. or, or any kind of the cold war it was it was so <laughs> it was... much better when i was in nato <laughs> On the um the sort of uh the Russian where we were in we were in West Germany on the sort of East German border on the Soviet bloc border and uh, it was better then than it is now I can tell you um um there was uh less you know I believe you less hysteria less false stories um we were we were further we certainly weren't going to unilaterally attack Russia we were actually a defensive organization. And we were only there for defense. That was our job. Um, and right, uh, you know, the back then, gone mad. Back then, I said this when I gave a few speeches that we could have had a different conversation, but in the 1960s or in the Cold War. But we're not in the Cold War anymore. So there's no Soviet Union. There's no reason for NATO to. Yeah, to re- no, NATO should have been disbanded in the 90s. You know. Yeah, um, the Warsaw we, Pact um, was so. Fair is fair. Yeah, exactly. The reason it's reason for being, and of course, this is one of the problems with the U.S. You know, if you've got a really, and this is, we all learn it in history, um, in about the causes of World War One. If you if you just keep building up, building up your military, uh, it's going to be used eventually. I mean, it's not. Um, they say, oh, we need to be prepared, but it's become this. Um, one of the analogies I use for uh, my uh, my book is the snake that bites its own tail, in that um, mm-hmm. we uh, we put in a, a, a tax on basically on ourselves uh, things that, situations that we've created ourselves, and we might, like a snake biting its tail, you get some sort of quick adrenaline hit because you think you've caught on to some prey or something like that, so you think it's good and you hold on all the more tighter. And um, uh, and the tail huh. panics because it's been attacked by something and doesn't realize it's it's being attacked by itself. And of course, the the snake wriggles and and bites and wriggles and bites as hard as it can until it, it dies. Worse. And that's pretty much like the Western system. We keep building up our, uh, our 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 militaries. They have all this technology. As a result, it, yeah, it, it it gets used. Um, sometimes we're boxing its shadows, and um. We uh we get some sort of small term hit uh, for boost in popularity. I look, uh, Biden is obviously 
got more popular the more he talks about war the more uh, the more um he 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 commit they can't give enough money to ukraine this is how obscene is this and this pretty much sums up what's wrong they if they wanted 6 trillion dollars in ukraine they would get it and yet you've got people on the streets of the united states yep. starving living in tents um it's shameful know, there's, there's that huge uh crisis with the um with this sort of uh artificial heroin and um it, there are huge problems in the u.s now and, yeah. and they don't give a shit um, yeah yet Zelensky can ask for a gold-plated cadillac and it'll be there in minutes <laughs> it's truly um, that's nothing it's uh <laughs> uh that's obscene. And if you were an American doing it tough, how would you feel? If you were a veteran with lost your legs that, or something, fighting for your country, living in... But in, in, that's in how they treat them. Hobby. Yeah, like the VA is how notorious for being bad. That? It's, it's, it's notorious it's like for being bad. Like in Afghanistan, it's, it's a way, war is a way to turn uh, public money into private money. You know, they give a contract to McDonnell Douglas or Boeing or Northrop and they... Um, uh, and it's for whatever trillion dollars, but they know they're going to get a billion dollars back yep. through political donations, uh, secret share do deals, um, all sorts of you know Cayman Islands. Um, <laughs> uh, the politicians are going to get a share of that back. So, and yet the money that they gave wasn't politicians' money; it was taxpayer money. There you go. So the taxpayer money becomes politicians' money, and, and of course, a lot of it gets shaved off to the um, the corporates. But it's uh, the people who really lose out from all of this is the American taxpayer. Um, yep. They pay for everything, even no matter how they paid for the Afghan. Um, uh, police, um, you know, huge bills, the Afghan, all, all these things that are now defunct, all these bases which would be destroyed. And um, that was all paid for by taxpayers in Mississippi and Tennessee and California, uh, a lot of whom don't even get medical. Well, most, none of whom get yep. free medical. Um, and um, that's outrageous. True. That's, uh, you know, the, 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 that's the, the, you, you, there should be a revolution in the US. I'm actually might not say that and get arrested, but <laughs> you, 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 would, you would understand that the levels of dissatisfaction um, in the US uh, must be very, very high. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it's shameful, you know, veteran or, 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 or otherwise, they, they uh, don't get any uh health care and if they do it's it's barely i mean calling it adequate is kind of a you know kind of a compliment yeah, i uh, mean it's no it's a disaster and yet money yeah. for zelensky every second get a, you know, he's got more yeah. than israel which is kind of a surprise <laughs> right like uh, they, they were number <laughs> one <laughs> yeah That's yeah truly uh, and um I went to a good book launch the other night. Um, uh, I'll give my friend a plug called The Palestinian Laboratory by an author called Anthony Lowenstein, um, who I really like. And he's very, um, he's a very brave guy. He's a, he, he's Jewish, uh, but he's sort of, I wouldn't say he's anti-Israel, but he's a critic of Israel's excesses, which makes him, uh, a, you know, a target. I'm surprised he's still alive, actually, but... Um, he uh he's written this book about and it's quite worrying there we go very very quick <laughs> <laughs> and um uh it's really it, it's quite depressing in some ways but very very good at you saying that all this sort of technology that israel is uh what they called field tested in, oh, in God. palestine about and it's all pretty sinister all all the um uh, phone hacking and uh, ways, you know, yeah, facial I mean, recognition. Th there you it, go. That's very. Export. Other countries love it. Yeah. So you've got the the you know regular ordinances and 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 weapons that people think of, but as you mentioned correctly, the cyber warfare. So they're exporting, they're building drones in England and exporting them. I think it's Elbit, and there's uh, uh Elbit, they always shut down right, the, the yeah. factories. The activists are good. And then, as you mentioned, this Pegasus, you know, they, they blacklist Pegasus, Pegasus the Americans, right, yeah. but there are other companies. They just, you have people oh, who made Pegasus who make new com companies, and, and that's it. You know, they, they're not blacklisted. 
No, I saw, um, I know it's disgusting. And I saw, I, and the governments can't get enough of it. And I saw something, not even governments, I saw something very worrying the other day. And again, you have to, you have to know what to look for to pick up on it. But it was a, um, the equivalent of the Bar Association, uh, a, a lawyer's group in mm -hmm. Victoria, who you'd think it'd be all about human rights, but they had some sort of incident where someone had put it, put it, an obscene, uh, a meme basically up on a wall, and it was, it was in sort of poor taste, but it was not the biggest deal. But the um, this Bar Association chased the culprits by hacking, by hacking their email. <laughs> they hacked all what? the lawyers' <laughs> emails looking for the now that's and and then they were like oh yeah we won't do that again because that's my that may be because some of the lawyers were like what are you what are you doing with this? shouldn't they, they know some better sort of Pegasus system where they they just decided to hack everybody's emails and find and um it, it's that's just some sort of corporate version of pegasus where they managed to get hold right. of that oh yeah we can we can go and hack everybody's emails and and that's the bar association that did that. I mean, I, I'm not quite sure to how, respond. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's wild. Like, but yeah, it, that um, and and so rather than sort of people sticking up for sort of uh, uh, human rights, um, they're just getting uh, trampled uh, left, right, and centre, and, and everyone can justify it. I mean, they say national security. We need to do this for national security. But this bar, they just did it because they wanted to find the culprit for a sort of ugly meme. Yeah. You know, so it's not, it's bullshit that it's national security. It's just like of naughty, naughty kids looking in there, you know, in the spying the in their neighbor's window and, and looking in um, people's if phones. I... It's not, it, there's no justification for it. It's just like, oh, wow, have you heard what we can buy from Israel? Let's get it. And then we can, um, you know, we can, we can start behaving badly. Uh, it's yeah, a shame that no one it. seems to be outraged by it. You know, after, after Snowden came out, you had all these companies uh, that popped out of nowhere trying to kind of capitalize off of this notion that you need, you need a VPN, you need this email to protect you, you need encryption, military-grade encryption. And I, and I, I was talking about this uh, teenager who is a climate activist, no clue what their name is, but, I, but they're part of a group in France who they basically do sit-ins. They, they go to some cafe or some place and do sit-ins. And the French police saw the person's email, and it's, uh, they, they asked uh, Proton Mail, which is in Switzerland, one of these companies says, oh, we respect your privacy, to hand yeah. over the IP address, and they used an Interpol warrant or a Europol warrant, uh, uh, saying it was terrorism. It's, it's, it's a kid who skipped school to do some climate thing. It, I mean, it, it's outrageous, you know? They, they can call anyone they like a terrorist, and then... Uh, uh, you, you yeah, use Pegasus, no use warrants. That's one of the big problems. Like I'm called a terrorist, which means that they can do extra things to me that they couldn't do if I was just a criminal. Yeah, like exactly. Set me up with people who, who try to, and this is why I'm always, you know, avoiding talking about violence because they, they once, once I met someone who I suspect was an agent who was trying to sort of, uh, coax me into taking up arms against the country, you know, on some sort of spurious grounds about how the the government was uh, run by sort of, it was, it was sort of QAnon stuff, but he was trying to talk me into uh, violence. And uh, and then when I said, oh, no, I'm not going to do, I'm not interested in violent revolution, mm -hmm. he was, he got really angry at me and said, oh, you're just full of hot air. You know, you should be doing more. And it was, I, I, I believe he was probably an agent provocateur. I see. To get something. So like entrapment or something. Sort of stuff they can do to you when you're a national security threat like me. And of Christ. course, the only real national security threats are whistleblowers. You know, most of our <laughs> secret intelligence services would be working on anti-government dissenters rather than actual people who, who that, do unfortunately true yeah. yeah yeah um you know i wanted to ask you david did you see the the latest decision on uh julian's case because uh they did they basically denied his appeal he's going to reapply i think on tuesday and uh uh, you know, as of now, currently, uh, uh, th the extradition has been approved, right? So he has yeah, to appeal yeah, all saw, of that. I saw that yesterday, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I was a bit of confusion because I saw, um, 
uh, I saw Stella Assange say that she was going to, uh, they were going to appeal to the high court on Tuesday. But then I right. thought I saw something early this morning that say that that's not going to happen. But um, do you think the I government in Australia is doing court, enough? Do you think the new one? Because because uh, you know Penny Wong and, and Albanese, they they they've talked about Assange. But do you think they're doing enough for him? And for you? They're not, they're not, um, but at least there has been some progress. I mean, that is, uh, uh, to their credit, uh, at least they have said, um, we're not comfortable with the situation. Like, that's better than the previous government. Now, that's, not, that's a long way from um, victory, but it's certainly on the way because they can't go back on that now. And, then, and while he said enough is enough, and if something happened to Assange or, you know, uh, he would look pretty bad because even if he's just said enough is enough, which is obviously not really particularly good, um, it means that they are what they are beginning to get concerned. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's a, that's a, that is a step in the right direction. Now, uh, obviously, it's you know they could do, and, and as other people have pointed out, and you've mentioned my case, which is, it, it's it doesn't make any sense for them to uh, agitate for Julian Assange's release and also put me in jail at the same time. <laughs> so actually, in a humorous way, Biden could say to them, oh, "Shut up! You know you're trying to put your own, you know." war crimes whistleblower mm -hmm. in jail for a hundred years <laughs> so, yeah. so what are you doing coming to me complaining about me right. doing exactly the same thing as what you're doing it's a quite um, a contradiction to put it mildly yeah i mean obviously yeah. biden i mean the, the, as you and i know of course the, the funny thing is behind the scenes joe biden probably doesn't even know who sanji is he's probably um <laughs> he's just pushed from pillar to post and of course it's all been run by people behind the scenes yeah uh, the, the mike pompeo's or you know right uh, right who tell biden what to say push him out in front of the cameras but he would have no say he could say i love julian assange and they would just laugh at him and say shut up read the lines on the uh, auto queue and uh basically and, and we'll pay you with breakfast if you do a good job i mean he's I'm not um he's he's clearly not the decision maker on this and um as soon as it's you know national security, it's it's made by people way uh, way above his pay grade, and um, uh, so but making noise in Australia, you know, it, it, I think in some ways it'll be quite. There is a silver lining anyway to him losing that appeal because it 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 it, it causes interest and um yeah, to go up. Uh, and people apparently the surveys say eighty percent of Australians, or maybe even ninety, want want Assange to come home. Right? Uh, they, they, they've tapped into that patriotism. Mm -hmm. um, they don't necessarily. Uh, the average person is quite conservative. They don't really. They don't like whistleblowers because they kind of think they're rocking the boat. And, and there's a certain amount of uh, trust in government, which is which is probably. Uh, misplaced i would say but um mm -hmm. it's still there uh but they also are very patriotic and they don't want to see um an australian uh is stuck in um you know and a, a horrific high security um uh cell in uh you know in under the under the rocks it's wrong to say colorado when we say colorado and australia you think of aspen and skiing and <laughs> and you know beautiful scenes but of course he's not going to be anywhere near that he's going to be in some dreadful yeah. underground bunker um and um which could be anywhere and uh i don't uh, the average australian is is you know is quite a sort of conservative but nice bloke but they don't they don't think that seems right um that yeah. that, that, are, that they're an australian that, that to be subjected to that and he's not a murderer um mm. He's not. Um, he's not really anything but um, an idealistic sort of person, uh, and to see him uh, crushed because everybody knows he just embarrassed the U.S. government and they can't handle that. And um, uh, the idea that they're going to kill him quickly or slowly is um, uh, is not going down well with Australians. And um, 
I, th I think that's moving in the right direction anyway. Obviously, there's still got a way to go. Um, but I'm confident that we are going to win um, both my case and his case. Yeah. Um, maybe in, in, uh, before you and I speak again uh, in a year's time, say. It's like it's, I, I so. see it in terms of the Second World War. It's not like it's not an overnight victory. It's sort of like a six-year campaign. We have small uh, victories in battles every day, right? Um, and I've seen I, 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 I've seen rather than dwell on the negative, I've seen good progress in the Assange campaign. I mean, there was a lot of um, excitement when Stella came to Australia. Um, uh, yeah. last month um because uh, we thought it was going to be AUKUS um there's a lot of anti-AUKUS we've even had ex-prime ministers our equivalent of ex-presidents oh, yeah. come out and say that AUKUS is a disaster and the subs are a disaster and um that's good these are powerful interesting smart people in fact one day I want to make a list um on Twitter of people who are on our side and people who are on their side, because increasingly the people on our side are the intelligent, uh, the experienced, uh, uh, you know, people who are sort of admired around the world. They're increasingly on our side. And on their side is looking pretty tatty, you know. Yeah, especially <laughs> with Biden. Mike Pompeo. <laughs> yeah, you know, you've got a few dweeby kind of guys. And, oh, man. Um, yeah, their their team is not that great, you know. No, it really isn't that great. And, um, <laughs> no, it's uh, not. It's not. And um, so that is that you know that and that has improved. And I guess it's all about momentum. And um, but thanks to people like you, you know, you've been you've been doing great work. And it's well, but, I see you. Cause thank you, David. It it never stops. There's a guy out here, Michael called Michael West, and he does the equivalent of you in um about finance and about government oh, rules okay. and about how, you know, and every day, it, it, like yeah, you, right, every, every day, day he's got a new atrocity um, and you think, oh God, it must be kind of hard, but you're the same, you know, I don't, and you'd be the same. We don't, activists, we don't have time to follow how many uh, terrible things are happening yeah. overnight. Um, but, because uh, there are so many. Um, there are so but, many. Um, I'm so happy to see that your uh, station has got bigger and bigger. Um, and um, thank uh, you very much. Because it's really important work. And you, you know, and yeah, it's a war, but it's a war where we, we've got, we're getting the momentum, you know, Stalingrad past <laughs> El Alamein. Right. And um, uh, yeah, we're slowly moving on. Eventually we'll, We'll get to Berlin and blow up this one sticker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, that no, makes me happy. We've always got to keep a smile on their face. And it's, I think I said that to you when I spoke to you three years ago, whatever it was. We've always got to keep laughing because they, they love to see us. They love to see us in being pain or being that's true they whatever. want people to give and up now our smiles are getting bigger and their smiles are getting a bit yeah smaller. Uh, so. no uh, david thank you very much for 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 all the kind words yeah you have an op open invitation and you know uh you you um uh i think all the thing the nice things that you just said they 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 apply uh uh, uh you know t tenfold uh, uh to you and and to to assange because you guys are really really at the, and not just in the front lines you guys are at the front you're in the first wave um and uh going all the way and i, I was actually gonna ask you can where where is um how is the situation now um uh with your case so like what stage are we in now well we're in act three um we have a date for hearing uh yeah. 13th lucky 13 of november it's a three-week trial um we're feeling we were trying to get the mm -hmm. charges dropped for a while but we're feeling pretty good about it now we're happy to go to trial um we think we could get a win either way in the sense if they put me in jail for a long time uh there will be public outcry a bit like assange people don't need to understand you can count on it yeah people don't need to understand uh uh the, the 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 full ins and outs of my case to say if i get put in jail before anybody um 
you know, even a guy that shot someone on, you know, on national TV, he has been charged, but he has he won't be going to trial for probably years. Um, mm. If I'm the only one from the Afghan Iraq war <laughs> who goes to jail for twenty years, Christ. people are going to say, "Really." With yeah. all these scandals and rubbish, <laughs> and it's gone on. What what exactly did this guy uh, d do? Um, did he really reveal any national security when you've got people who clearly murdered? Uh, how, do, how does BRS away get with away it? with it? I really, I, I don't yeah, understand yeah. this. Well, he's probably flying around the world in a private jet now. Um, <laughs> I heard he's in uh, Bali. <laughs> he, he was in Bali for the getting his back rubbed for the uh, for the trial. Yeah, he's not really doing it tough. Um, uh, he's probably going to go and work for some private security company. He, he, we'll, we'll have an Australian Blackwater next. He can, he yeah, can head yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He's probably. He, I don't think he, he he's doing it tough. So yeah. Um, and, and those offences, even though it was a defamation action, those offences were proved. So it's going to, you know, I almost wish, will them to put me in jail because it, <laughs> nothing will make a blow up in their face more than putting me in jail and then trying to justify while I'm in jail when there's all these other people and not just the corporals, yep. but generals with big question marks over them. Uh, and, yep. and they're, you know, living the life of living the big life in their in their mansions or or traveling around there's all these kind of corporate crooks we've had a big scandal with price waterhouse coopers where they were stealing government secrets and giving them to their uh uh their clients so they could avoid tax and now while there's been a little bit of a scandal about it no one's been charged they're unlikely to be charged let alone go to jail they're probably not going to miss next year's aspen trip and yet um <laughs> uh you know i'm in jail I and mean, that's going to sit very badly for the government to say this guy even my enemies yep. say oh look i was a well-intentioned person um who uh who believes you know i'm a little bit wound up a bit tight and you know believes too much in the rule of law and doesn't you know whatever they say they, they there's no one that can say um i'm a spy there's i've got no uh connection to any other country i never made any money out of what i did right. um it, it, it's going to be very hard for them to sort of keep me in jail for 20 years when all these people who clearly did some very bad stuff yeah. uh, are, are prospering and, you know, keep it and got money in their pockets, you know, and my book's going to come out before the trial too. And that's going to be, <laughs> Uh, well, uh, you have to come here to plug it <laughs> yeah yeah I, that's when I'll be, I'll, send, I'll be back on next time to get that up it'll yes. just be before the trial comes out so we'll plug it and, and uh, see if we can get on a bestseller list that will Absolutely. really they'll hate that we'll get the Russians <laughs> to buy it <laughs> <laughs> it, you better use rubles. Those dollars are well, not going to translate well. it into Russian. <laughs> Russian and Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, one, one thing I would like, and this is serious, I would like it, it, it put into Afghan language and um, Arabic mm -hmm. um, because I'd love people in the Middle East to to see yeah. uh, there at least is someone um, from uh, the Western worlds uh who can see the hypocrisy and lies for what they are and to a certain extent wants to uh, 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 uh po apologize for it or at least you know someone who stood up because i think that would be nothing would help peace uh, more than then uh, us cleaning our side of the street and saying at least one person right. say we i can see we were full of shit um and it must be incredibly uh, hurtful for you. Um, and uh, yeah, I am here. This is one of my big, I guess, dreams is to go back to Afghanistan, go back to the Middle East as some sort of peace ambassador. To, and, and of course, the best way to start that process is to say, this is the truth. We did this wrong. We did that wrong. We did that wrong. Um, and that doesn't mean that the others, you know, other sides won't do well. But that, if, if you want to start a, a decent dialogue, start with the truth and start with admitting your fault. Um, and um, Absolutely. I would love to uh, 
to do that and and, and this is a good way to it's start very that, noble you know? it's very noble yeah. and uh and and um you know uh coming to terms with your own history i think it's it's um it's just critical thinking it's uh, uh, uh but in in your case it comes from a place of of uh, real reflection and love and, and, it and yeah, it's a noble it endeavor people, people like you um it works i mean we had a guy an sas bloke who would witness he didn't murder anybody but he 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 was part of a team where someone was murdered so again not a taliban we came into town, the SAS came into town, they shot this, they shot the first bloke they saw. Um, Just drop a knife and, then on the uh, body. He was wounded and then they, um, uh, yeah, there was no, yeah, the, 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 the sort of supporters and haters go, oh, they were just killing Taliban. This is another situation where they clearly just shot a random. Mm -hmm. Shot a random and he wasn't dead, he was wounded in the leg. And then... Um, Oh. Uh, the sergeant took this random off to a private room, said, where, where are the Taliban? The guy was like, I don't know, whatever. Um, and then the sergeant kicked him to death. Christ. And, uh, and he, this guy wasn't Taliban, but, uh, you know, he's funny enough, his family ended up joining the Taliban. Um, <laughs> I anyway, wonder what <laughs> the, the, uh, um, a witness, one of the other members of the patrol who 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 saw this, and he knew he 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 didn't do enough. He didn't stop it. Not that it would have been easy to. I see what do, you mean. But still, people being people, and he's obviously a very good person. He felt very very guilty about this, chewed him up over a period of years. Wow. He wanted to make a bit like recompense. You know, he wanted to. Um, ideally go to Afghanistan, go back to this village and, um, and actually say, uh, I'm sorry. And um, uh, COVID made that impossible. And oh, right. so he, he did it by Zoom. And, you know, the typical sort of racist scenario in Australia was don't do that. They're just only going to ask for money and, um, and uh, uh, we know whatever, don't give an inch, but it, it and because he he did it, and of course it wasn't what people said, and the family were only um, uh, they weren't even sort of angry and out. They were they were impressed that he had the the honour to make the call and to say mm. I should have done more. I'm sorry, your father's dead, uh, and I should have done more. Now that impressed them. They didn't say give us money or. Uh, you know, how dare you, or, you know, the, you know, violent. They were impressed that he had the honour. Uh, and while it's obviously a sad call and they're not exactly going to celebrate, it's still, uh, it was honour to honour. They they kind of acknowledged it. And they also, you know, they've lived for war all their lives, the last 50 years. Um it wasn't as yeah. if he, he was beyond their bounds of understanding. They knew that in war, you know, soldiers would kill people or whatever. But what what did annoy them was that we lied about it, you know. Uh, and yeah, um, it's like adding insult what, to that, injury, that, kind of. Yeah, that's the hypocrisy that you know got to them more than anything else. You know, that mm -hmm. we would come there and say, "Oh, we had a, we had this, we had to fight for our lives against these, you know, Taliban," and actually. We shot someone who was holding a shovel, and then we kicked him to death. You know, that's yeah. um, you can imagine. You know what? We, yeah. That because it, 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 the, the, you can see, and this is one of the great myths because it, it, you know, we used to say, "Oh, the Taliban they brainwashed kids in these madrasas and they torture them and brainwash." That's the only reason why they, anyone would join the Taliban as if they've been brainwashed. They didn't have to brainwash them. Uh, you know, stories like that got out and people wanted to join the Taliban. And you can understand yeah. why, you know. Uh, the truth was enough to make people join the Taliban. <laughs> you can find yeah, similar the, stories in Iraq and Vietnam, right? Yeah. Like, oh, they're just brainwashed. Yeah, exactly. It's nothing to do with us. You know, <laughs> brainwashed, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, they're robots. They're not real people. And, you know, no, no real person would support that. Yeah, if they, if they sort of hear about stories they didn't have to make up 
lies it's, to get people to do well, the same thing in ireland I, as well you know you had people joining the ira after what uh, yeah yeah well i was yeah. there of course yeah and our propaganda uh <clears throat> wasn't um we didn't tr we, we didn't try to lie quite so blatantly we knew that they were uh they were people fighting for uh self-determination and um we yeah. didn't try to say that they were i don't think so anyway but um it was just um yeah, it, it, yeah. The, we, we, our propaganda was lies, not theirs. You know that they all they needed to do was to tell the truth, and this is why it made me so angry because I was a true believer in the Western forces. But we we became the people that we said we weren't. You know, we, we can't we became the people that we said we enemies were. You know, we put out the false statements. We killed the civilians and said they were Taliban. Uh, they didn't need to lie to recruit. They recruited because the average person knew the truth that we were full of shit and that they were fighting for their country right. against collaborators and foreigners. And um, and I, I saw it in a few, there was a few telltale signs, a bit like the Viet Cong. One of them was their soldiers fought for rice, uh, our soldiers fought for money, you know, and uh, you know that you're on a loser when no, when your people won't pick up won't pick up a piece of paper, let alone a rifle, unless you give them a hundred bucks. Whereas the other guys are, are fighting uh, with with fury in their heart mm. and and happy to get some free rice. Um, that is when you're on a loser. And um, mm. yeah, yeah, we put out all all the sort of false. Um, it becomes projection, you know, like all the things you just described. The the yeah, it's it's really just projection in the end, and and I say that a lot because everything we say that today in you know twenty twenty three, it's the Russians and the Chinese. Everything we accuse them of doing, it's actually. Um, I had a big tweet, um, you know, when uh, uh, the Ukraine war started, and somebody said to me, trying to catch me out, saying. You know, do you think the invasion of Ukraine is illegal? And I said, well, uh, you can't enforce the law against one country and not against another. And if um, if the invasion of Iraq wasn't illegal, or we didn't punish anybody as a result, put it that way, we can't start punishing um putin for doing the same thing you know the law is only the law if it's applied consistently um and that and then i went into a longer one just saying i don't remember the russians having any black sites where they took people to yeah kazakhstan or thailand and tortured them to death be, specifically because those countries did not have anti-torture legislation I don't remember the Russians doing, um, you know, things like General Petraeus, who was in charge of all the wars, and yet he had a bevy of six mistresses that young, young, not even mistresses, young, young left female lieutenants that he was having sex with in turn, and at the same time pretending to be some sort of moral crusader. You know, I went through the list, I can't remember them now, but we, yeah, we say the Russians are bad, and yet we're the ones with the secret torture sites uh, where mm -hmm. we kill people, often innocent people. We just take them off the streets, take them to some country, deliberately select it, torture them to death. Yeah, projection is exactly right. And I I, I was cringing um, when I saw that horrible Victoria Newland. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Oh, the Russians. Yeah, they often do stuff and try to blame it on us. It's well, straight it out like, of the Russian playbook, right? They love this, know, this yeah. stuff. <laughs> I know, and you think that just makes Christ. my blood boil. And then, and then when Seymour Hirsch, you know, pretty much conclusively proved that they blew up the Nord Stream, uh, he was a, he was attacked by you know Washington Post and New York Times. You know, they had in some ways you've got to take your hats off to the CIA in the way that they have successfully infiltrated um the major news networks uh so seamlessly yeah um, but it's a sad you know we are we are heading for a dystopian future if we're not already there 
uh, where um, it's slightly different than in the um, in in the sort of sci-fi movies because it's CNN. Uh, it's all these things that you think a normal journalists are actually putting out government propaganda. They're not dressed in government uniforms, but you and I know right. that they actually are government operatives in good disguises. You know, African Americans and the people that you don't you don't think, oh, he's a government operative. But when when you start yeah. listening to what they're saying, you think it's, they all sound the same. Government operatives. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, and that make that's something which changes in my changed in my lifetime, and it's one of the most worrying things. I mean, the the New York Times and the Washington Post uh, helped stop the uh, Vietnam War, and they exposed the Watergate, and they brought the government down, and um, yeah, at risk of going to prison, and um, and uh, now that is they're so different, far, different papers. You know, now they are right. actually working for the government, and in the right. worst possible way, not just putting out happy messages, but actually running down people like Seymour Hersh. The, the, the funny thing is, people. Washington Post they themselves have admitted two days ago that Ukraine uh, was telling the United States about wanting to blow up Nord Stream. So it, you know, it's uh, it's like BBC. They come twenty years later and say, well, and, and they'll they'll interview someone who says that well, the war in Iraq was a mistake and so on. But when it matters, they never actually tell the truth, right? Yeah, it's a bit like oh, I know. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that worries me. I mean, it's it's more than just a, a game that can destroy the world. I mean, what I what I, one of the scenarios I can see. Again, with a bit, little bit of military inside knowledge, this is not classified information. I don't want anyone to get arrested, but it's highly likely that the US won a war in China and they will start one um, with I a I was going to ask you about attack. this. Yeah, they will start one with a false flag attack. Um, and we need people like the New York Times and, and, and Washington not to come in 10 years, like you said, 10 or 20 years later to say, oh, yeah, it's a false flag attack when no one really cares. They need to be aware of it and start outing the, the military now because that's a serious, no yeah. one's going to benefit. I mean, I wanna, I'm, 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 one of the things I'm trying to do with Assange is actually start putting pressure on American corporations to do more for him. Um, people like Nike and, and the sort of stuff which it, who are, who are ubiquitous around the world and to say you're not blameless here unless unless you're you're either with Assange or against him and, and if you're if you're mm -hmm. not making noises about him to the uh your, your government sponsored um you know uh, representatives you are against him and you would need to uh no one, you're not going to be selling many Nike training shoes if if, if there's a nuclear war with China. No yeah. one's going to want to go jogging um, if there's nuclear waste floating in the air. And I can assure you, in California, there will be. Um, you yeah. reckon the Nike training shoe company might be trying to stop a war because it ain't going to be good for sales. I think a lot of their stuff is sold in China and made in China anyway. So what's going to happen to all their factories, you know? Um, and uh, uh, the pro so they have an interest to actually do some more about saying, really, you want to have a false flag attack in China? And, you know, maybe the hawks in Washington uh, think, oh, yeah, yeah, China's becoming an industrial power and we need to do whatever we can. But hopefully some saner heads in the corporate world will be saying, <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know whether I can't it's believe, be good for sales. I can't believe know? we have to depend on on, uh, on the corporations to come uh, save I know, the planet. We, it sounds a bit I weird. <laughs> they're the power in America. You know, there's are, no, yeah. there's, it, it, it's seamless, you know. It's yes. not as if like, um, uh, and we, we talked about it in Washington, you know, the, the security services within the papers now, but the, um, there is such a, in fact, it's wrong to even say there's a revolving door between, um, <laughs> True. you know, Boeing and Northrop and, and the military. It's, it's the a same way. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's become, it's become the same yeah. organization. You know, you could probably get posted from the military to, to Boeing and, and back to the military and you, and you wouldn't even consider that you've actually left the military, you know, yeah. it is, um, 
it's effectively the same thing now. And um, so, and the corp, the big corporations are the same. They, uh, um, they obviously don't pay tax or they don't pay much tax and they, and they're, they're expanding all around the world. And while, yes, while it is sad that we have to, um, um, we we have to sort of beg a, a corporation to do something uh, on a, a for truth and geopolitics. <laughs> I think they're particularly vulnerable to it because, you know, Nike are always sponsoring, uh, you know, football programs, soccer programs in yeah in Taiwan or uh, or anywhere. In fact, you know, getting more uh, Muslim women to play soccer or something like that, and they've got lots of feel good stuff on their website. But you need to call them on it and say you know you've 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 tried to be a force for good what are you doing about the greatest force for good in the world Julian Assange and truth and maybe you should make a statement about that rather than just selling us glossy ads about the sort of good work you do around the world this is this is a really important thing take a stand yeah um, and show us that you're not just trying to sell more shoes Take a stand for David um, and, uh, McBride as well, as well, because you know, like, like yeah, you said, it's it's nice. one camp, it's one team, it's one team, and yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I, that would be nice. And um, w- yeah, uh, because it is about truth. I'm not trying to put it. In, I'm happy for people to make profits. I'm happy to, for them to, uh, but it's not going to benefit anybody. It, it, the, the sort of like the the new these new age hawks think so they seem to think oh yeah when we we use all this israeli technology and for, and we basically lock people down like in a a sci-fi movie they think that's going to be good but they do not know haven't they seen terminator or whatever they do not know that it's going to cause a revolution there might only be a small number of us but the david mcbrides of the in 50 or 60 years time not me security services don't come remember but my descendants will go to war, you know, if, if it really does become this horrible new, um, uh, you know, terribly oppressive um, uh, lack of justice. You know, we, we, they may have control of 80% of the population, but the other 20% are going to be angry and they're going to be armed and they're going to blow it all up. And it's not going to be some sort of wonderful, peaceful world run by corporations. It's going to be a civil war everywhere. Um, and um, I, th- I think and- most people have the same opinion. They're, they, they're opposed to the war in Ukraine. They're opposed to just sending billions and trillions to Ukraine and, and having you know, a, a, a bad relationship with Russia. But they don't, they don't show it. They don't want people to know that actually... Uh, the, the... Well, people are scared. People are quite rightly scared because you could get yeah. locked away, and we, we've seen it. There's that journalist yeah. you would know in the UK um, from the Grey Zone, and he's you know he's only published real information about the you know the truth about Boris Johnson and whatever. And the cops, when he came into Heathrow, they they treated him like he was Osama bin Laden. That's the future. That's, yeah, they, um, they did this to a French journalist also last month, and they they, they asked him if he's um, uh, you know a fan of of uh, Macron and if he was pr- involved in the protests. And this is in London. I mean, I don't, I don't really know too many people who care for for Macron, but but uh, yeah, you know, and, and and I think people don't people people don't um, uh, remember that the uh, terrorism act of 2000 is actually something that was uh, created uh, uh, to to screw with the irish right it, it was uh, you could be held for 7 days instead of 1 day without charge and uh, yeah, that, that's we that's we what it came right out of and this is <clears throat> this is where the crossover with your world and my world <clears throat> and it's important um yeah, we thought we were pretty clever when we did that. And and one of the things that we need, when I'm speaking to, if there's any marketing geniuses out there, we need a good marketing genius for sort of human rights, because human rights, it sounds very um, wishy-washy and it sounds like, oh, yeah, what's that? People that want to, uh, want, you know, prisoners that want to have three meals a day and, you know, exercise machines or something. It's um, But it's anything but. And 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 because there's no adult supervision on them, once you've got a law which says you can hold someone for seven days, 
um, it gets abused. It happened in Australia. We did it too, and and they got caught. At someone who was a he was a doctor. He was a Muslim doctor, but his cousin was involved in a terrorist incident or something, and they held him for seven days. And uh, he it wouldn't have taken long um, for them to work out he wasn't involved. You know, he was a doc- yeah. fucking doctor, and he was and he really was a doctor, and he was, and yet. They, they, if they could have used, you know, torture techniques or whatever, but they were doing it probably for political reasons. They wanted to, they get angry. They want to hold someone, and um, and yet it all, it's so short sighted for someone that might who 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 kind of believes in them in them in the military. You could, if that guy wasn't a terrorist, you know, after seven days of being brutalized, yeah. You know, Without any reason for it, you reckon he might become one, and and uh, because it, all this stuff backfires, it doesn't. It stop backfires. Terrorism. It makes terrorism. It makes terrorism, and the idea that you, that you would um just start uh, arresting people, yeah, and all this stuff that we passed, and and at the time, uh, I even I was like, oh, you know, human rights, you know, that's a bit over the top, and civil liberties it doesn't sound very sexy but it does matter because uh like that sort of famous poem i can't remember but it's something like um you know they came for the communists and i didn't care because i wasn't a communist you know and they came for the uh and eventually they came for the journalists and i didn't care because i wasn't an investigative journalist but eventually they will come for you and don't think that they won't i am a very middle of the road middle class guy who went to oxford university and um my father was famous, um, went to Sandhurst. I'm not the sort of person you imagine being put in a, a, a in a high security prison for the rest of my life. And so don't think all I did was did my job. Um, there's no there's no suggestion that I actually truly dangered national security. I spoke up because I thought that mm. the, you know there were cover ups and that we'd become highly politicized, and I did it for patriotism. Uh, if they're going to put me in jail and make me die in jail, no one is safe. You know, anyone that actually tries to do the right thing uh, can be a terrorist. And that is um, that is a problem, you know, because I'm a patriot, as, as was Snowden for that matter. He just said, uh, how, how dare he say that, you know, the head of the NSA shouldn't go on TV and lie to the American public about whether or not the travesty. <laughs> <laughs> how, how dare he you know and he has to live in russia now this is one of the things like you forget yeah russia's the bad you snowden lives in russia he can't go to america they they cancel this the passport bad guys. yeah they can't they you, did you it know? on purpose because they know you know they can twist it but uh you know yeah I, yeah, so, yeah, yeah yeah no no it's, i just on, wanted yeah. to to say um uh, you're right you know if you actually care about the country and and you 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 want to healthy society then then you don't support these things that they're doing the wars the corruption because it only it only leads to conflict and it only leads to impoverishment you know and they've got a uh, a saying it's, in the it's law. the opposite of patriotism yeah a saying in the law yeah that's what makes my skin crawl because i yeah. am more of a patriot i'm even more of an american patriot than than mike pompeo for example <laughs> yeah. um, because I believe I believe in you know uh, democracy and I believe in the U.S. Constitution and I've got lots of good American friends, but it's not patriotism uh, to abuse the law and put people in jail who who their only crime was showing that the government committed crime. If the government committed crime, they need their asses kicked, um, and it, it's not patriotic. Mm-hmm to put those whistleblowers in jail. You know, the whistleblowers should be running the the military because they are actually the ones that speak, that actually support the constitution, that support the rule of law. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially in your and, case, it's because, you, uh, um, uh, David, because, you know, you, you are, as you said, you know, Oxford, uh, uh, Sandhurst, in the military, you, you and, and also a lawyer. So... You you have yeah, I know what both the of these <laughs> realms. I've got a pretty good idea, put it that way. Yeah. Right. And right. um and yeah, and I'm a patriot. My one of my deepest uh, ambitions is to go back to the military. Um 
and as a consultant and to and to help them sort out the issues that made me had forced to do what I do. I'm I'm not anti military. Um, I'm not anti US. Um, right. I I, uh, I want to see these systems work, but I'm anti corruption. I'm anti bullshit. I'm anti uh, false wars that are created yeah. just to sell arms and 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 create a diversion to get crappy politicians reelected. <laughs> Um, and you know, that's what I was brought up on. I don't see myself as a revolutionary. I see myself as someone actually trying to make the establishment work, um, and to root out the bad guys. Cause unfortunately, slowly by slowly, um, the, uh, bad guys have taken over the bus, you know, we've been hijacked. You know, the U S is not run by good people. It's run by the very worst people. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to set that right, you know. Uh, I want to see the U.S. thrive, but it can't be the world's most um, evil regime. It's got to change its ways and actually become a force for good again. It ha yeah, it has to. It has to. And I, I'd say the same goes for, uh, you know, um, the U.K., obviously. And, but as uh, it is, I might have to go and live in Russia if I'm <laughs> ever allowed to leave Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, there's also drones flying around Moscow this time yeah, of no, year. I, I might get droned. Hillary Clinton <laughs> might drone me. Oh, God. My God. Except they'd probably miss and hit the house next door. As, yeah, as usual, right? No, but it, it's, yeah. uh, it, it's always the same story. You know? um, and uh, I remember during the withdrawal of Afghanistan, even then they tried the same old game, like, oh, well, we, we were following him all day and he was oh, a terrorist. Yeah. And no, then that's the problem. I mean, mistakes get, this is the sort of reason, this is why I'm so against them. Mistakes happen, no problem. But the fact that they bald-faced lied about that and said, oh, yeah, we got this great terrorist. Yeah, fantastic. You know, high fives all around. And then when they were questions were asked, they they maintained their lies, and yeah, then it like, turned out they who creates the these terrorists? Uh, you know, you, you notice every time um, the United States they kill some ISIS leader in in Syria. Uh, guess where he is? He's uh, uh, they're, they're usually in the vicinity of Idlib, which is Turkey, uh, you know, occupied by Turkey, yeah. another NATO member. You know these guys. They, you know, when when it came to to the war in Syria, they they all the European countries are turning a blind eye and letting all these foreign fighters through and go going off into Syria. Oh, and, yeah. and you know, and again, if, if you're old enough like me, I was young at the time, but I remember the um, the Afghan war in the 1980s um, when they were sort of sponsoring what they called the Mujahideen. Uh, who were really just the forerunners of the Taliban. They were, right. you know, extreme Islamists who who wanted to kill any foreigners, um, and didn't want um, didn't want any progress. So it's ironic, and and yet that caused that caused Afghanistan in the two thousands because we smashed the country so badly, and we gave anybody who said I I will kill Russians for you. We gave them stinger missiles. We <laughs> gave them money, you know. It's true. And then they had to suddenly, when the Russians left, they had to run around madly and pay ten times the price of stinger missiles to get them off the very people they'd given them to. What do you think is going to happen in Ukraine? They created a monster. Yeah, we, we created Osama bin Laden, um, us and the Saudis, and uh, yep, that's what's going to happen in Ukraine. We're not going to let the neo Nazis take over. And once the Russians, if the Russians go, and there's probably they probably will eventually after a ten year horrible war, um, and where Ukraine is in ruins, we're gonna we're gonna have these crazy people, um, a bit like Syria. Um, I could see it happening again in Syria, who are like disgruntled, who are armed, uh, have got money, and they're gonna go to the US and blow up buildings in the US, and it's not gonna be. Uh, Ukraine's fault. It's going to be the US's fault because this is a you know they reap the whirlwind as they say. We've created this thing 
and it's going to come back and bite us. We've created this crazy snake and uh, we think yeah, it's going you, to you, attack the Russians, but it could just as easily attack us. You notice how, how these terrorists, they always have files and photographs of them. And, they, you know, within 10 minutes, they say, oh, yeah, it's 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 uh, that guy, you know, who they've been, <laughs> they've sort of been uh, uh, getting on board for a while. And, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, there is, there turning some, into an and, asset. And we don't even have to guess because we can see what happened in Afghanistan in the 1980s. Right. You know, we, That's a prime we've example. We've seen this movie before. We have. And, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and all these people, we were doing, we were arming Bin Laden, you know. we were, we were, He was our buddy because he fought Russians. And the Russians even said to us, you know that this guy, it, and people like him will eventually come for you. And we were like, oh, oh, oh well, we're the we're the free people. They'd never come <laughs> for us. But uh, sure enough, they didn't think we were free. They thought we were corrupt, and they came for us. And um, uh, that's right, you know. It, it, uh, but da you David, you know, as of battalion, <laughs> right? You you said that <laughs> you we don't like America. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Um, the Nazis in Ukraine, they were recruited and run by the CIA, like e even after, yeah, sure. uh, I think it started in 48, if I'm not mistaken. And so you, when, when you say that they're going to get rid of them, I really don't know. I have uh, <laughs> very severe well, doubts, they're not to put get them, if, if, You know, it won't be popular for them to take over. So, I mean, just the, the CIA being the CIA, they will double-cross them eventually. When they've outlived oh, of course. their usefulness. <laughs> Uh, they will double cross them, and of course they will come for the CIA. There's no, that's the problem when you've got people on your side uh, who don't really have any values, don't really have any morals, um, who are basically criminals working for you. Um, when you when you when you lie down with dogs, as they say, you get up with fleas, and um, these guys will eventually double cross each other. And eventually start fighting each other because they they're not motivated by doing the right thing, they're motivated um, by some sort of weird violence and uh, sort yeah. of short term revenge, and they are not people who can be trusted in the long run, and they will eventually um, the CIA don't play fair. I mean, they're eventually going to turn on each other, and it's going to be a sort of carnage. Um, and it, it, it's a carnage created by very short-term thinking where all they really care about is winning the next U.S. election. Uh, <laughs> and that is not a good way to try to run the world. And that's one of the problems with the, the Iraq war. You know, they uh, George Bush would have, would, have, would have been thrown out in the 2004 election unless he'd gone to war. And um, that was probably the only reason they went. And it would have... Uh, that the, you know the amount of million people dead you know 20 30 million people displaced and then of course it, you see it even in then because then syria was the same yeah on one yeah. hand they were starting a war in syria and on the other hand they were outraged that there were all these syrian refugees trying to get to europe and yeah, who created the refugees? <laughs> didn't sort of say, didn't connect the dots and say, this is what happens. This is what this is a situation you created, and and how dare you now sort of be outraged and sort of like say, no, no, stay in Syria. You know, Appar you, apparently you, they're you the invaders. You know, not yeah, the CIA, yeah, it, not MI six, yeah, not the it, SAS, not the British yeah, Army, yeah. the Americans. No, no, it's it's yeah, a bunch of yeah. civilians. Refugees yeah, are the exactly. invaders. They create these situations upside down some world, sort of short term goal, and then they complain about the situation that they've created and and having to mop up, um, you know, pretty much everything uh, from Osama bin Laden um, to these sort of attacks um, uh, in England. Um, after uh, you know when they were bombing ISIS, everything is is actually you can draw back to U.S. Uh, yep. aggression in these foreign countries to begin with, yeah. and it comes back to bite them eventually. It all starts with um, them overextending themselves and um, and thinking that it's clever and giving money to dodgy people and doing terrible things, and then of course they get attacked. 
uh, and then they blame um, the people that attack them. But it's not that hard to trace the origins of attacks on America and attacks on Britain to attacks they have made on other countries without justification. Look at Libya as well, by the way. The list is Libya, so long, I mean, you know, they, Somalia, et cetera. Libya, they've turned it into a, well, a sort of prehistoric country with slave markets. and, and um, Yeah, uh, yeah, but... And uh, they thought they were being clever, you know? Yeah, but Gaddafi was more evil, so, you know. <laughs> no, yeah, of course. Of course, know. of course. That's right, and they get away with it. They get away with it. They simply cannot handle anyone who successfully has a different system um, to them, you know. You know, And uh, this is, again, one of the sort of peace missions, I want to say. We need to be able to accept um, that, the, you know, and it's that, so hypocritical, you know. We do business with the Saudis, um, who are the most sort of repressive um, or hardline Islamic regime, and we don't do it. There's no problem with the Saudis. They even cut up. Khashoggi and you know and tricked him and cut him up and and that we don't have a problem with that but oh that we you know we cannot deal with the Taliban because of their hard line principles <laughs> I mean the hypocrisy is disgusting you know it's really yeah, like you it, you can disgusting. chop up journalists but no barrel bombs yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly oh we can't we can't and of course they they're setting themselves up for an Afghanistan mark five but by by cutting off the Taliban uh, from any foreign aid and for refusing to, you know, letting them their children starve, etc. Yeah, it, and then and then they, they say they they're failed states. They're not they're failed states. Have, exactly, so. make them a failed state, and they're going to have to seek um, uh, money from somewhere. So where are they going to go? You know, opium and, probably. Um, I don't know. Yeah, but the thing is, if you look at opium in in Afghanistan, it skyrocketed. After the invasion, uh, one, after of the, one of the things that turned my blood was um, because I was there. I was one of the few people to be in Afghanistan mm -hmm. in 2000 when the Taliban were running it. And um, the Taliban did destroy that. You know, they did destroy the opium, even though they could have made money over it because Mullah Omar said, uh, he thought about it and he said, it's un Islamic. It's going to cause uh, Islamic people okay. to die. Um, I see. And, um, he was the only one tough enough to actually put it through. And, of course, we denied that. We pretended that he wasn't in charge. We sort of said, oh, the Northern Alliance are the real government, even though that wasn't true on the ground. And then when we invaded, um, the opium came back again. And yet we still managed to paint them as the bad guys, the opium dealers, whatever. But it was us. It was us, the opium dealers. And they mm. had tried to... Um, uh, and, we, and we never gave them any credit. And, we, and also we saw in 2000, we saw the starving people because they'd had some famines in 1998, 1999. We saw the Afghans, a lot of them were starving and their kids were dying of hunger. Um, and we refused to give them any aid. Um, and um, uh, this is one of the reasons why they blew up those Buddhas. You know, they were so outraged that we they weren't going to blow the Buddhas up because they were hoping to get tourists to come in to see them. But they were outraged that I think it was the Japanese said they would give them billions of dollars to fix the Buddhas, but they wouldn't give them a cent to mm. feed their children, you know. And that's out and that's outright. And they just thought oh. that was outrageous. They just thought we were the most disgusting sort of people, that we were happy to see their children die. Because they they didn't enforce human rights, so so we'll let them die. And that's our punishment for them not, you know, having living under Western standards. Um, and uh, oh, but we will give them money to fix statues, you know, because that's important to us. You know, uh, you know, they don't need propaganda and brainwashing. All they needed was the truth, <laughs> because it was pretty. It showed just how full of shit we were, you know. We, we didn't care about Afghans. We didn't care. We know plenty of we, famine doesn't doesn't dis, discern between gender. Plenty of women died because they were starving yeah. and girls, baby girls. Uh, we didn't care. We didn't care about that. Uh, yeah, where we are their human rights? Them. Yeah, but we didn't like their human rights record, so uh, we weren't going to give them food. I'll, I'll never understand um, this logic of, let, you know, punish the entire civil civilian population because we don't like 10 people in a cabinet. 
Oh, yeah, no, and yeah, you know, it's, it's evil. Outrage. It, it, there's no sense in that, and the media need to get and you know, kick up the button to start. They do. Reporting they do. On it because and hypocrisy to say this is why we need people like sense. you, Dave. And it doesn't even work, you know. You, you look what happened. We thought we were being clever with, you know, Afghanistan yeah. in the year 2000 and we didn't give them any food or didn't give them any aid. And then next thing you know, you have 9-11 and you have uh, 20 years of war. So it didn't. It doesn't even work, you know. Hypocrisy and lies um, will only create more war and it's hard not to agree with Julian Assange to say, they're not trying to end the wars. They just want endless war because endless war yeah. is profitable and turns public money into, into private money. And while if you said that to me 20 years ago, I would have said, well, that's a little bit extreme. I don't know that's true. But having seen what I've seen, I think that's actually true. And that's, a, you know, that's a disgrace. And the Nike, gov the Nike government, the, the <laughs> Nike company, why not? all the corporations, <laughs> probably, they should be speaking up because it, that cannot be good for business. It might, it might be good for business if you sell bombs, but there's a whole lot of businesses that don't really benefit from war. And the, those businesses should be speaking up and saying, look, why, why don't we concentrate on health care? Why don't we concentrate on lifting the Americans' people out of poverty um and that might be a better thing to concentrate on war yes mcdonald douglas and grooman and all these people they might make less of a profit but too bad you know because selling bombs the problem is if bombs get dropped uh they kill people and it yep. creates death and sadness and um We've become that snake biting its own tail. Eventually, we will die. Dave, you know, it's, it's like you said before. We're um, uh, just by just by saying what what you said that you know li lift people out out of poverty, uh, give them health care. We I don't know why this is radical, but just by saying these things, that makes you more of an American. A so, you know, an American patriot, quote unquote, than yeah, Mike Pompeo. <laughs> Easily. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I care more about him. You know, <laughs> it's I, true. Because Twitter is quite, um, you know, you've only got so many characters on Twitter. I, I, you know, you could have to say, you know, the US is bad, but, but, but of, I love the American people. I, I want to. I want to be able to. Go yeah, this there. is a deflection. This is oh, you you hate the West, you hate um, uh, America. Yeah. So they, that's absolutely rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. The people who hate the jail, West I'll... are the ones uh, starting these wars. They take the yeah. money of everyone in the West and spend it on bombs and to murder if, people if we had and enrich an themselves. Movie about the uh, the U.S. at the moment. The villains would be the bad guys in the U.S. government. You know. That's why I can't I can't handle anything. Where, you but know, they used Netflix. to they used to have Les, uh, Leslie Nielsen. I don't know if uh, anyone yeah. will remember. Yeah, uh, is, yeah. yeah, he'll burst in, and then there's all you know there's Khomeini and all, and all the uh, quote unquote <laughs> evil leaders you know, at a table. It, it's so comical. It's really comical. I know, but the, it's really the 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 bad guys of the world are uh, are in the are in Washington D.C. You know, unfortunately, and, yeah. It, it, they're not patriots. They're they're there to make them, you know, the, the not. Dick Cheney's. They're there to make themselves rich. Yep. And um, I'd happily go and work for uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. for his um campaign. Um, one of my another one of my many dreams is helping him get elected. Um, I uh, you know, I've got a lot of American friends, and that's uh, I'd love to go and uh. And help clean it up because it could be great. I'm not anti-American. All I'm anti-crook. I'm anti. Uh, I'm anti-criminal. And um, we need to clean this that the place up. And um, uh, I'm I'm very excited by Robert Kennedy's platform. And um, I think um, you know he calling the bullshit on the on the foreign wars and various other things. I, I, I think, think I be really good. Yeah, I think it might be him. I, I I saw one clip and I and I'm not too familiar with him. I think that might be the one. Uh, I think it was about NATO. He was doing some some conference or something. But uh, uh, yeah, he I, I haven't says watched all, the all of it. That we say, yeah, he he sort of says, yeah, look, we've you know we need to stop the foreign wars. Uh, we need to start telling the truth. We need to go to do healthcare. I mean, all, all sorts of stuff that, that if you had any kind of 
any sensible person would think is hardly radical. Um, and, yeah. Uh, you know, I, uh, I, I, you know, it's, so it's, it's good um, to see that there are some people out there. Tulsi Gabbard's another one. She's, she seems very sensible. She's, she's someone that's actually been in the military. It shows you, you know, all the crappy phony patriots like Pompeo. I mean, Tulsi Gabbard's actually been in the military. She yeah, went she's a major. Iraq. She, yeah, she was a major like me. She was, um, she's a mother. Uh, she's someone that actually has some credibility, has actually fought for her country, not like all these phonies in Washington. And um, yeah, she's anti, you know, anti this ridiculous wars. Anyway, she's not, she's not, she's like me. She put on a uniform. So she's not anti soldier, but she's anti bullshit wars. Yeah, but and, um, Dave, I, I'll tell you uh, something, and, I, and I've said this before, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with everything she says, but the stuff about the wars, she, you know, because she criticizes that, they were starting to call her like, uh, I think it was Hillary Clinton saying she's like a Russian asset or something. She's a major. <laughs> I think they would have known that whether she's a Russian asset or not by now, you know, uh, the, the, yeah. the amount of background uh, yeah, checks. Exactly. They, it's just a lunacy. Like, what does this even mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure I'm a Russian. Well, I actually have been to Russia. I've been to Vladivostok many when we were doing the, um, the documentaries. But yeah, I mean... I laugh uh, because, you know, I'm probably a Russian and Russian Chinese asset. Anyone that criticizes them, <laughs> I think that was one of the greatest tweets of all time was that Hillary, uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Oh, putting, right. Uh, I remember now the Queen, Queen of, of War Mongers. Mongers. <laughs> <laughs> it was a legendary Burning, tweet. Uh, it was. Uh, Hillary, she's such a hapless fool. Um, she could, I think, I don't know, I think it's a parody account, but it's kind of real where she's. Oh, the Taliban, the Taliban even burnt her. You know, <laughs> so, you know, you just complete failure in everything you do. Um, no, I, I got to give her credit for that tweet. Uh, that, that was that yeah, was quite yeah, was pretty, queen uh, of war monsters. Pretty funny, and she um, definitely is. Uh, uh, you still see Hillary Clinton get wheeled out to comment on her affairs, and, and I just well, every time I see her now with a microphone in a pants, and I say, want to say, oh my god, what about your um, the Great Pied Piper plan? Mm, <laughs> yes, yeah. it turns out she wanted she Trump. Basically, she, she basically wanted put Trump. Trump in the White House. Yeah, she thought he's such an idiot that she's <laughs> going to lose. Talk about poetic justice. <laughs> oh my god, they're both clowns, if you ask me. I know, <laughs> but, they but that both was just, are. I mean, that was just poetic justice. He's uh, a clown, a but it does make you laugh because that's the idea of strategy. It didn't work very well. <laughs> wow, wow, you yeah, know, like know. all of her politics. <laughs> My dog's getting a bit upset now. I might have to take him out for a, a walk. He's like... You um, do that, Dave. Again, thank you so much for coming on. It's always a pleasure. And I'm going to plug your Twitter on the screen so people can uh, can uh, find it. What's your handle again? Murdoch Cadell. Murdoch Cadell. Okay. Yeah. Give me give me a second. But if you just put in Major David McBride, I think it comes up. But M-U-R-D-O-C-H-C-A-D-E-L. And um, uh, there's a picture of me with my dog, I think. <laughs> there we go. There he is. <laughs> That's the yeah. one. That's the one, yeah. All right, all I'm, I'm zoomed all the way in there, and I've highlighted it there. You guys definitely there go follow David McBride, and, uh, and then, you know, I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to uh, uh, shine, um, you know, um, shine some light on your case and julian's case and uh every time anytime there's an update please you i mean you have an open invitation dave so please come on whenever you yeah, feel well, like I'm, it i'm glad i'm glad the podium is yours. radio show we might have to have you on that one day that would be very quite nice well known out here now oh lovely. And a lot of your um our little clips that we've done together um uh they get circulated my australian fans on twitter have, have circulated <laughs> our first interview saying this is one of the best interviews that david's done because we have a chance to go in, in depth about yeah it. and uh so it's good for it's you very and, nice and good for me it gives you some audience out here true so true. um uh again thank be, you so much dave is it will this be on a podcast where people can download? yes it will yeah um yeah. if you type uh richard medhurst on on whatever uh apple podcasts or spotify you'll find it 
Um, oh, it's good. just Ty Richard met her, and every single uh, um, episode that I do is there, uh, whether it's video mm. or otherwise. Yeah, well, you keep up the good work. I will, I will, and, and I, I appreciate world. you saying that. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. I'll take, take care, Dave. For a walk and yes. Lovely to talk to you. Likewise. Likewise. Thanks for watching.